landscape along the I-4 corridor. Welcome to Political Connections. Welcome to Political Connections, everybody. I'm Yvette Brussois. The dust has now settled from the August primary election, and we are now just about two months away from the November general election, and the races are definitely heating up. One such race is for U.S. House District 9. Here's a map of the area, which covers Osceola County, parts of South Orange County, and just a little bit there of Polk County. Democratic incumbent Alan Grayson facing challenges from Republican Kara Platt, NPA candidate Marco Milakovic and a writing candidate joining us this week, the incumbent representative Alan Grayson. Thanks for being here. Thank you. All right. So look, um, one of the things that I want to do as we start off this conversation with you is talking about all of the issues that are going on in the Middle East when it comes to um, ISIL, ISIS, whatever you want to call it. Um, we had this uh, former UCF student, Steve Sotlov, who was uh, beheaded. The image is just, the situation is chilling. What are you hearing in Washington, D.C.? Because you're a Democrat, the President of the United States is a Democrat. Some would say, even within your own party, that the President has not done enough thus far. Your thoughts? Well, the president is acting cautiously because it's a complicated, difficult position. Uh, we, there's a lot of different options. Uh, I am pursuing one option on my own. I'm a member of the Foreign Affairs Committee. I think the fundamental problem that we have at this point is that the countries in the Middle East, the Arab countries, have developed a culture of dependence upon us. They think that the United States exists to solve their problems. And it's just not the case. We have problems of our own that we need to deal with. So last week I contacted 10 different Sunni countries in the area, 10 different Arab countries, and asked them if they would contribute at least 5,000 fighting soldiers apiece to fight ISIS. And I gave them until this Wednesday to respond. We'll see what their answers might be. Um, you're doing that. What are you recommending that the president do, though? The same. Uh, it's an Arab problem. It ought to have an Arab solution. I hesitate to see Arab tax dollars and Arab blood being spilled in order to solve a problem that was created in the Middle East and, and should be solved in the Middle East. Boots on the ground as an advisor, to have an advisory role to actually get in there and uh, do what many don't want America to do, but some say there's just no option. Well, as I said, if we have the Saudis, uh, the Kuwaitis, the Omanis, uh, the Egyptians, the Turks contribute 5,000 soldiers or more, uh, that's an overwhelming force against a, a, a force of roughly 4,000 ISIS soldiers. The Iraqi uh, army has shown it has no will to fight. Now we have to see if other Sunni Arab countries are willing to step in and take care of this problem. They have a huge advantage in fighting ISIS. The, the area that ISIS controls is a Sunni Arab area. If we have Sunni Arab fighters against ISIS, they understand the language, they understand the terrain, they understand the religion, they understand the culture far more than our young fighters would be sent in to do uh, it, 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 where there's a language barrier and a cultural barrier that inhibits their ability to fight. Congressman, I definitely agree that we could talk about this literally for hours. It is that complicated of an issue, um, fighting that's been going on in that part of the world for centuries. So let's just go ahead. Well, only 12 centuries. Okay. Well, a long, <laughs> long time. A long, long time. Let's pivot for a moment and talk about the economy. We've had six years of very turbulent times, uh, many would say, and especially in the state of Florida. The Great Recession since 2008, unemployment just through the roof. Um, right now it's hovering just around 6% or so. Some would say, though, some would say that when you're looking at the real unemployment rate, and that would be um, everybody who uh, has been looking for a job, but some say are not within, uh, within, they're not actively looking for a job, so they're kind of like discounted. Um, that some would say that's about 12%. When it comes to the specifics of what you're seeing as a recovery, specifically in District 9, what are some of the things that you can tell that your opponents uh, don't have a leg to stand on? Well, one thing is that I support a higher minimum wage. It's not just the number of jobs, but it's the quality of jobs we need to be concerned about. We are producing all too large a number of $8 an hour jobs with no benefits, and that causes me a lot of concern. We, we are generally uh, here locally uh, an area where we have large uh, international employers. Our employers are uh, theme parks, hospital chains, 
um, telephone companies, huge companies that can well afford to pay their workers more. And I want to see that they do pay them more. I was happy to see that uh, a paid sick leave initiative that I supported passed on the August primary ballot. Unfortunately, Republicans in Tallahassee have now permanently blocked it from taking effect. But I want to see paid sick leave for our local employees. I want to see higher wages. I want to see health care for everyone. Let me ask you this, Congressman, though. The big companies that you mentioned, the theme parks, they can do that. Um, and some other uh, big, big corporations. What about the smaller mom-and-pop employees? They're really kind of um, the lifeblood of Central Florida. I mean, we've got the tourism given. That's been uh, this area's bread and butter for decades. But what about the smaller companies when they're saying, you know, I just can't afford 15 bucks an hour? Well, uh, we're a long way from 15 bucks an hour. If we raise the minimum wage to $10 an hour, it would be back where it was in 1967 in terms of purchasing power. And that still would be a huge imp increase for the people who are struggling at $8 an hour. And frankly, uh, tipped employees make much less than that. The minimum wage for tipped employees is $2 an hour. And uh, they get taxed on their tips whether or not they actually receive them. The, the IRS gets a report of tips they might have received, not tips they actually received. I'm, I'm, I'm listening to you going, I remember those days. I used to be a waitress for many, many years. And sometimes <laughs> I would have to pay the employer some money to for other things, uh, taxes and such, if I only made, I don't know, 20 bucks that night. Not because I wasn't a good server, of course, but because, you know what I mean, business was bad that night. Let me ask you this, though. Jobs, okay, we, we, there's so many ways we can talk about jobs across Central Florida, especially District 9, but what about the Space Coast? That's always a big concern. Uh, we had um, SpaceX, you know, recently say adios to part of the, the operation, actually, in Brevard County going to Brownsville in Texas. You know, stuff like that shouldn't be happening. How do you prevent that from happening, how do you attract even more jobs to the Space Coast? Well, you pass a law. Uh, that's a good way to start. Uh, I proposed an amendment to a science and technology bill on my committee, the Science and Technology Committee, that would have required manned space launches to go out of Cape Canaveral. And unfortunately, I didn't get the support that I wanted from the administration on that. Uh, but in fact, uh, if we are going to be subsidizing these companies with taxpayer dollars to do space launches, we at least want to be able to decide where those space launches take place from. And it shouldn't be some kind of race to the bottom to see who is going to subsidize them the most. We we have an enormous amount of infrastructure here in Central Florida. We have an enormous amount of, of skills that people have developed over the course of the 50 years of the space program or more. And, and that shouldn't just be tossed aside. It, it's had a devastating, the, the end of the shuttle program by itself has had a devastating effect on the local space economy. And there's it's, no reason why that has to be that way. It's, um, it's so sad when you go to Brevard County, and I go there often, go to Brevard County, and you literally see just uh, mile after mile, uh, you know, places just belly up. The weeds have taken over some car dealerships, restaurants, strip malls, and you go, what used to happen here? And when you talk to the locals, some of the diners uh, that I go to, and they always say, yeah, this used to be booming. Well, we had the space shuttle. We'll have to wait and see what happens.